Okay, this is a continuation, two videos in one day, or maybe I'll spread it out. We'll see. I'll probably just post them both today. Um, continuation of this this fear of failure in recovery or really um, feeling like you put in so much hard work, but you just haven't quite found yourself there where you want to have that just mental peace. You just haven't experienced it. Oftentimes that is because along the way, there were obstacles that came and they went and you never really conquered them, okay? Maybe that was buying white bread and having as much of it as you wanted. Maybe you bought white bread, maybe you had multiple slices a day, but it was never quite as much as you wanted. Or maybe it was peanut butter. Maybe it was like, okay, I'm gonna eat so much peanut butter in recovery. And maybe you ate a jar a day, but maybe you wanted two jars in a day and you didn't do it. Maybe you wanted a jar and maybe another spoonful and you didn't do it. Your, it any time that you give in to restriction, you're welcoming your eating disorder back into your life. And that gets really hard when you're trying to find that mental peace. And so the things that you are not willing to do in those prior attempts at recovery are the things that you now have to do. And I used an analogy with a client earlier that I want to use now. Imagine those of you that are in school or those of you that have been in school in the past, um, sometimes a very kind teacher, if you took a test and you did horribly, or even if you just weren't satisfied with your score, okay? Um, oftentimes they let you retake it, right? And if you're gonna retake a test, and my kids sometimes do this, if you're gonna retake a test, what's gonna be the smartest way to study for it? Go back, look at your old test. Let's look at the things you got wrong. Let's make corrections. And then go in there with confidence and retake that test and you get 100%, it's gonna be amazing, right? When you are faced with this, in this state or you're in a stage where you're realizing, I didn't do recovery right. And I'm sure the thought is gonna follow and I've gained weight because everyone always has that thought. We're gonna dismiss that thought because this applies to everyone right now. But you have this thought of like, I didn't do recovery right. Here's your opportunity for a do-over. Here's your opportunity to retake the test of recovery. How beautiful and wonderful that is, right? So we're gonna look at the test. We're gonna look at this past attempt at recovery and we're gonna look at the things that maybe didn't go so well, that maybe perhaps you kind of got wrong, probably because of fear. We're gonna write them down. We're gonna write them down on paper and then we're gonna say, okay, we're ready. We're gonna start recovery now. We're gonna do this, we can do this. I have confidence, I know all the things that kind of tripped me up last time. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna find that peace. I'm gonna find that freedom. And you can do that with confidence because now you know, you got this, you have this, essentially this cheat sheet. You have, you had exactly what you needed to study in front of you and what you needed to correct. Essentially the things that you were afraid to do the first or second or third or 12th time. Now you're gonna actually do them. And it doesn't really matter if it took you one do over or if you're a person who's, this is your hundredth do over. It's that last, the one that you decide to be the last one is gonna be the one that gives you that 100%. It's gonna be the one that when you find that freedom, you don't have to go back and take the test. You don't have to go back and do recovery again. You don't have to go back and try to figure out what you did, um, not, not necessarily what you did wrong, but essentially go back and do the same thing again in a more creative um, kind of, uh, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? In a more kind of like, um, oh my gosh, I, I want this word so bad, what is it? In a more creative and um, deceitful way. And deceitful is not really the right word, but essentially kind of like, it, the Enos word can kind of seem like it's wrapped up in this pretty package and it's presenting this wonderful plan to you for recovery. But really what's inside the package is a pile of crap and it's gonna get you nowhere, okay? And so sometimes, when we're reflecting on, you know, okay, let's see, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back and try a different method, but really it's just the same method, it just essentially is a common theme is restriction in some way, shape, or form, you're gonna get you're gonna get the same results. Okay. And so that is my continuation of my first video on failure. This is something that I feel like has been a common theme, excuse me, with clients, is this lack of um of acceptance and what needs to happen in order to recover. And along with that is this kind of loss of hope, this loss of their ability to even do this. And is it even worth it? And that's really sad. And I don't want anyone to forget that it is worth it. And if I have to say that every single video, I will, but it's absolutely worth it. This is a very short period of time though. Each day in recovery feels sometimes very long. 
this is such a short period of your life that you're going to gain so much freedom. Um, when you think about, and I know the underlying always comes to mind is this fear of weight gain, Becky, this fear of weight gain. But yes, okay, I know exactly how to make the corrections. I get it. I know that. But with that 100% comes weight gain, right? And you freak out. I understand that. Fair enough. I get that. But you're not going to be able to work through that weight gain and get them to a place of acceptance until you've kind of got to that freedom. And that kind of stinks, doesn't it? So a lot of times conversations with clients will be, oh my gosh, sorry, Hazel. Clients will be these conversations where I've gained so much weight, Becky, and I don't feel like my mind is even better at all. And I'm like, have you like, is there any restrictions still going on? Have you kind of like cut corners? Do you feel like you're really giving it everything? Is there anything we can dissect and kind of tease out? And usually almost always there is. So when someone's gaining weight and they're fully in recovery and they're totally committed, though that weight gain's uncomfortable, it's manageable. They're able to plow and push through it because they're starting to experience the freedom. But when you're doing that weight gain in a very disordered way or getting having weight gain in a very disordered way, it's like, what gives, man? Why are we even doing this? This is actually just way worse. I'm still having all the thoughts. In fact, they're louder. And I feel very uncomfortable with the way I look. Why on earth would you do that? I don't blame you. I don't expect you to do that. I think that's a waste of time. I, I, I think that makes absolutely no sense when you're in the state of the eating disorder and under the influence of the eating disorder to, to try to gain weight in disordered ways. It's not very effective. And a lot of you can relate to that. And so instead of doing that, be efficient in that rewiring. Allow the weight to come on. And then those are the conversations as a coach I absolutely love, actually. I feel like I can do so much good for that client when they've teed themselves up. They've gotten, they've landed at that place where they're in, a, in a, certainly in a bigger body, right? They've, they've restored their weight. Um, but their entire life doesn't depend on that anymore, right? Their, their mental space, the mental space that they now occupy is so much calmer that they wouldn't trade anything, nothing. They've never trade anything. And so they're willing to figure out, okay, how will I accept this new body? What are things I can do? Maybe I could stop tearing myself apart in my head. Hmm, that's an idea. Okay. Maybe I could start behaving like I'm not embarrassed of my body. So I'm not going to like avoid social settings. I'm going to, you know, not, um, cover myself and act like I'm so insecure. Maybe I'm going to stand with my shoulders back and I'm just going to act like I'm okay with it. And as you do that, you start to feel okay in your body. And you recognize that that body has given you wonderful experiences and all the things you didn't get when you had a smaller body. So I'm talking a lot today. Oh, so much. Lots of things to discuss and that has been going on in my mind um, since I've had like I said, some kind of common themes with, with clients. I just, hopefully this is helpful and hopefully something I said today clicked or resonated and really got you and kind of kicked you into action. All right. Have a good day.